Hi, my name is Alan Prost and I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the um, Ultima Series Medigraphics Pulmonary Function Equipment. So when you come into the lab, you're going to see this device sitting here, right here like it is now, and it's hooked up to a wide variety of cylinders and gases. Now it's important that you know what those gases are because some of them are going to be for your patient's use. In other words, your patient's going to be um, breathing them in and out. You want to make sure that they're hooked up correctly at the back of the unit here. You also want to make sure that uh, you have the proper test gases and how that'll be hooked up, just in case you ever came into the pulmonary function lab and those were not hooked up. So you can see how to set those up. Now on the backs there, there's specific pressures that those gases have to be regulated to. So that's kind of the background stuff. Other than that, it's just a basic computer. And we have here our gas controlling unit. All right, so that's where the computer's hooked up and controls all the gases and controls this device right here which is our, both our pneumotac and our gas controller. Okay, This big box right in here is our gas analyzer. So that's how we can tell what gases and analyze the gases that are being breathed out by the patient for specific tests. All right, well let's look at this little device here. What we have is we have our pneumotac, all right? And that's hooked up, that's how the, this device measures the flow, the pressure gradients, and the volume is right here with this pneumotac. Now you can see here, it's got some little valves inside here, and this little rubber piece. It's important to watch for that because if this gets ripped, which it will do over time, you need to be able to replace that. This black piece right here is the regulator. That's what the patient will be breathing through when we do specific tests like the nitrogen washout or the DLCO test, okay? So it's important that all these valves be working properly and uh, that you're aware of how those hook up. So the fact that those are, are gas operated makes you realize that you need to have your gases hooked up for this device to work. Now, this little component right here is our pneumotag. And it's important that you plug this in correctly when you're hooking that up. There's a little notch in right here that has to line up with a little notch right here like that. And these little tubes have to line up with little holes also right in here. Now, this is the heart of the device. This is our pneumotac, and this pressure drop across here caused by that little bit of resistance inside there is how this device measures flow and pressures and volumes. By measuring the pressure drop across that known resistance, it can calculate the flow. If you know the flow for a specific period of time, that tells you the volume. This third part here, this other little tiny tube here, is for our gas analyzer, and that's hooked up back up into here so it can analyze the amount of oxygen or carbon dioxide that is being exhaled by your patient. And for very special tests like the DLCO, it'd be measuring carbon monoxide levels as well and helium. So this has to be made sure you hook that up correctly. Now when we're doing a gas calibration, we're going to hook it up just like this to this gas analyzer unit. Be very careful making sure that those line up correctly. So your first week or so, you won't be doing any uh, gas analysis, but it's nice to know how that would hook up, and sometimes it'll ask you to do this just before a test. So let's make sure we've got this hooked up to properly, and that'll fit right in here, just like that, before we do a test. And of course, we're going to have our patient's filter hooked up onto there as well. So your patient will be sitting here, breathing back and forth, and this is height adjustable so that they can be comfortable while they're doing their testing. So, the next thing I need to show you is how to open up the software and calibrate the pneumotech, because we have to do that daily. So, let's come over here, and we're going to be operating the Breeze software. So, let's just let that fire up here for a second. And uh, you'll need to know how to utilize this software when you're doing your calibrations and your patient testing. So, initially it opens up, as you can see here, we've got our patient data. And I'm going to just cancel out of this right now because what I want to focus on is doing a basic calibration of our pneumotac. So let's hit calibrate. It comes up with a nice little menu here. Hardware communication error. All right, there we go. All right. So what we're going to do, make sure this is all hooked up here. All right. Ah, you know what? That probably says that isn't on there. So initially what I like to do is make sure we've got our 3 liter syringe on. We have to make sure we've got the temperature set 
properly to the room. So right now it's um, 23 degrees. I'm just going to set that back in here. It's 23.2 degrees. The barometric pressure today is 663 and the humidity is about 29%. So make sure you get those values and set those up right away. Next thing I do is I like to zero the pneumotag. It's really important that it be zeroed. Don't hit the reset unless you've got a very specific reason, and I'll talk about that probably in during lecture of the lab times. All right, so I'm going to set you over here like this. All right, so we're going to be calibrating this pneumotag. So I need a three liter syringe. And I'm going to just take this off of here. So this can be done anywhere. Um, we're going to do this every single day before the device is used. Okay? So I've got my three liter syringe, I've got my pneumotac hooked up to the end, and I've got a filter here just mimicking like we would have with our patient on here. Now on this little screen here, it captures some elements that are important for a calibration. We have to do it at a wide variety of flow rates. With this particular device, it actually does a calibration and verification at the same time. So we'll just hit start, okay? And it tells me to withdraw three liters. Now, I've got high flow rates and low flow rates. Initially, it doesn't matter, but I start off with kind of a moderate flow rate, all right? So you can see I've got a little line down here telling me that it's measuring three liters. This has been working quite well, and then it tells me to inject air, and now with dry air. Now the goal is to do this on a wide variety of flow rates. So I'm going to do a really slow one here. So for our ATS criteria, we have to do both high, slow, and low flow rate. So I'm going to do another low flow. Now they don't have to follow the lines exactly as I'm doing here. With a little bit of practice it's pretty easy to do that. But initially, you don't have to be following the lines absolutely exactly. Now I'm going to do a couple of high flows. All right. Okay. So we've got a little bit of an error here, probably because I might have hesitated a little bit, or it just might not be calibrated quite right. So I'm just going to do a couple other flow rates here. And we'll do a nice, slow, medium kind of flow rate. So this one here is already giving me a warning. On my higher flow rates, it didn't calibrate successfully. Okay? But we repeat this a couple of times until this comes in and it's measuring exactly the three liters as we need. Okay? It's important that um, it meet ATS criteria, and that's plus or minus 3%. So on a three liter syringe, that's 90 mils. That's actually quite a bit. You have to find out that um, these devices calibrate much closer than that. In fact, these ones calibrate to within um, less than 1% error. So that's basically an orientation to the device and how you calibrate. You might have to repeat this a couple of times until you get a calibration pass. Then we print up the report and you'd sign it off as being calibrated and verified, ready for use for the day. Thank you very much.